<laughs> Welcome to the old Jewish district here in Krakow, Poland. And it is now a very hip area with a lot of bars, cafes, street food. And today we're going to wander around these parts to see what we see. To see uh, the restaurants, the bars, the just the general vibes. And right next to us, we can actually see some of the history. I'm starting right now with a nice pilsner at this little beer slash vodka garden. And ooh, let's try this out. Oh, oh, they make great pilsners here in Poland. And here we can see the historic photos of where we're sitting right now. A good portion of the Jewish population would have been located right here, but the Jewish population of Krakow came from all different social strata. So in reality, they were spread all throughout Krakow, from the richest parts in near the castle in the old town, um, to some of the poorest areas further out into what used to be the outer perimeters of the city. But here was where most of the Jewish population was concentrated in. And we are only about a 20 minute walk away from the old town, a little bit less than that. And let me finish off this beer and then we'll walk around and enjoy the sights, the sounds and everything. Let me know where you're watching from. I'm Ariel, this is Urbanist. And here we're in this beautiful alleyway, with, which I'll show you. There's more history here to be shown. And we can see that there is some history saying that Paul Schneller is a Swiss photographer who has spent the last several years traveling frequently to Krakow to document local Jewish life. And he was here at the Kazimierz, might mis be mispronouncing that part of my Polish, and throughout his presence in the Kazimierz, Schneller became a well-known and friendly face, a foreigner without, with a sincere interest in all things Jewish. So that's his photos right over here. So hello, hello everyone. It's starting to get uh, more and more people are starting to come over here. <laughs> and um, let me know where you're watching from. I am enjoying Krakow. I wanted to do a live stream earlier today at the factory of Oscar Schindler. And um, the, the museum was sold out, surprisingly. There was no more tickets being sold. I was there two hours before closing which I didn't quite expect. This is slow season, it's February, and uh, I did not expect the museum to not have tickets. Apparently you have to buy tickets several days in advance. You cannot buy tickets online either the day of. So I was screwed. Um, but luckily there was a tour group right in front of me and the woman who was running the tour asked me if I needed a ticket and I bought myself a ticket. So I was able to join the random tour. I paid about 35 um, dollars, 35 euro, in order to get this ticket. And um, it was a really beautiful experience. However, I couldn't live stream because it was a tour and I can't really film the tour. I didn't feel that comfortable doing so. Um, but luckily there's videos online if you want to check it out. I did film a little bit inside. So I'll do a short video about the museum. I do recommend it. It's a very powerful museum. As I mentioned, you can learn about the history of World War II, especially um, what happened to the Jewish people in World War II. It wasn't just the Jewish people. Catholics were also persecuted. Uh, other people were persecuted. People who had um, handicaps. Um, Roma people. Many people were persecuted here. And if you want to learn that history, there's a few sites you can go to. Go to the ones outside the city. They're much more heartbreaking to see in person. Um, but if you want to stick to the city, you can go uh, to the Oscar Schindler factory. Uh, so I couldn't live stream earlier, but I decided right after this, it's only about like a 40 minute walk away, a little bit less, 30 minute walk away to get to the museum. I decided to go to the neighborhood just north of it, which is the Jewish district. And that's where we're at right now. So ask me any questions you would like about my experience in Poland so far. I've been here, this is my third day. I love it. It's a great city. There's a very sad history here. And that's true indeed. I think the city also has a whole lot more to offer aside from uh, the terrible events that should be remembered and should be acknowledged uh, from World War II. Is the red light flashing on you or are you just red? No, it's a red light right here. 
dog barking in front of me. But yeah, it's a red light. I'm in this beer garden. And the beer, and the beer gardens here are gorgeous. Gwen says, is there good food? Yes, I won't be eating in this live stream because I'll be saving space for dinner later on. Uh, but, but yeah, I'll, uh, there's the food. says thank you so much for the video and for teaching us about uh, the places I visit my pleasure my pleasure I'm so happy I can do the that for you thank you so much for watching this live video hello Hermes says hello Susie says I thought you were having too many beers because it, it looks red is this the light uh, no I haven't had any drinks today so far um, hello firestorm and Nicole nice to see you here Bob says in the beer again oh yeah can't deny a good beer. I love these glasses. I see a lot of these glasses in Czech Republic, <laughs> but I haven't. I don't see them too often outside of um, in other countries. Sometimes in the U.S. when they serve Czech beer, they have in these glasses. I love it. So Anya and a lot of people are asking me, "Will I be going to Auschwitz?" No, I will not be. Um, I I'm not comfortable with going personally. I think it's important to be okay and to respect your own boundaries. And I would encourage everyone who's traveling uh, to countries where there might be a hard history. This happens in my own New York with 9/11. Um, to respect your own boundaries. If if you feel if you don't feel comfortable going somewhere where maybe other people may tell you you should go, I would say respect your boundaries. Don't go. Um, but personally, I was interested in going to the Oscar Schindler Factory Museum, and I'm glad I did. And in terms of coverage on video, something I don't feel comfortable either covering on video. I'm mal-equipped with talking about that topic, and I think there's other people who could do it way better, and who are doing it way better. And you can probably watch a lot of videos, and probably by some great people, uh, on YouTube. Uh, so you moved out from Krakow? No, I'm still in Krakow. All right, let's finish this off and let's get on walking, shall we? Let me know if you want to walk around the old Jewish district. Of course, we don't have really much of that Jewish identity left, but hopefully we'll see some glimpses of it. There's a synagogue here, and um, uh, now it's mostly a place where a lot of young people hang out, 20-somethings, 30-somethings. Uh, so the vibe has changed. And it is sad to see such a long legacy to disappear. But cheers. Let's take a walk around. Camilla says, what are you eating tonight? I don't know, but some classic Polish food for sure. For sure. Uh, but I'm saving space because I eat with my friend Evan and our third friend who's on the road trip and we're gonna hang out with the local as well. So I was at Volka Cafe Bar and as the name says there's a lot of vodkas here and let's uh, check out this alleyway. This is the name of the alleyway and there's a lot of cute vintage shops. So I gotta do another prefacing. This is, these are live videos. So live videos aren't edited. Um, and by the nature of them, we're kind of hopping around. And just by the nature of it, we're also hopping around between topics. So as we're walking around, um, it is important to be in a neighborhood like this with respect uh, to the past that is very hard uh, for many people, locals and people from all around the world. 
Um, but at the same time, you know, there is life here. So uh, I may be enjoying different aspects of this neighborhood and, you know, having a nice beer and enjoying it. And um, don't take that as me being um, not um, respectful of those events. I think a very important thing as we learn as we're traveling is there are cities around the world where tough things have indeed happened. Um, but one should not limit your enjoyment of that city. I think it is more respectful to enjoy the city um, knowing that the history of it. All right, let's continue walking around. Hey, Sally says, are you enjoying Poland? I am, I'm loving Poland. Uh, Doreen said, don't feel guilty, exactly. Yes, I think uh, I think that's, that's what I'm trying to get at. Don't feel guilty. Do you know there's a castle on the hill, says Adam. Yes, check out my live stream yesterday. We'll, we'll probably catch a glimpse of the castles we're wandering around, uh, but yes. Do check it out. So here, there's some vintage shops as well. There's some antique shops. Old signs. Ooh, I gotta get this for my bathroom. And ooh. Here's some old postcards. Look at this, wow. Millie says, absolutely. Donald says, I, you're, I know you're always respectful when you travel. I have to disclaim that because, you know, what, live streams are long and sometimes people take things out of context. Uh, so here is a uh, old postcard. Wow. So she says, life uh, can't be sad all the time. Life continues. Indeed, it's, I think, um, all those who perish might want us to continue living life with the utmost joy as we can. So some of them are empty. What is this place? It strikes me as Greece, actually. Some of them are empty. Here we have a Christmas one. I wish I knew Polish. I can't read what it says. This is 1988. Oh my. <laughs> oh wow, that's 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 a long time ago. Those are ancient times. Wow. Hey, Susie says it was pre urbanist times. Indeed, it was, yeah. Hey, uh, Gwen says, thank you so much for exploring the old Jewish district. I'm Jewish and my parents lived in Poland. Hey, Gwen, yeah. Um, did your parents, did they live in Poland in the or did, did they move? Do let me know. Uh, yeah, I'm happy I can show you around uh, Poland and this Jewish district today. So here we have a lot of photos. It might be from the same gentleman we mentioned in the beginning, Schneller. Oh. I'm not entirely sure, but I think this is, yeah, I think this is the Catholic man who was a pharmacist who kept running a pharmacy and was the only Christian allowed to be in the Jewish ghetto 24-7. Uh, so he lived in the Jewish ghetto, uh, which is nearby us right now. Some of the walls still remain 
I think this is the gentleman. I can't tell for sure, but I think this is him. It says, if that is him, there was um, a Christian man who was a pharmacist who was allowed to live in the Jewish ghetto 24 seven because he wanted to continue um, providing services to the community he grew up with. Uh, the misconception is that people thought that Jews and Christians were separated here in Poland. Uh, as far as I'm gathering, that does not seem to be the case. Uh, sure, we're in the Jewish district, but probably wasn't all Jewish here in the Jewish district. Uh, similar to how New York City is, for example. So, and then Christians were also persecuted, namely Catholics, uh, which was very interesting here uh, from my perspective, because I grew up Catholic, I consider myself Catholic, and um, I didn't quite know that. I didn't know the Catholics were persecuted. So nonetheless, uh, one of these men stayed in the ghetto, and he had um, a few other Polish Christian women working with him that would not stay there at night, but they would go back uh, outside to Krakow, outside the, the ghetto walls, and they would actually smuggle in information about what was happening. They would uh, take in like Torahs to bring into the people who needed them to do their spiritual practice. And they also recounted, the gentleman recounted details of what happened in the ghetto. So he actually found out, uh, he actually was one of the very few resources for people after the war when most of the people were unfortunately exterminated. His account was one of the few first-hand accounts of who lived there and what their daily lives were for those few short years. Here we see to what appears to be a barbed wire fence and it says that someone's smuggling. Hey, Susie says, ghetto has a, a different meaning for me. Yeah, ghetto was appropriated in America and ended up getting a different meaning with similar connotations. So what appears to be a German soldier checking papers. Now Krakow wasn't fully annexed into the German state as Austria was or as Western Poland was. There was what's called the general government, which included Warsaw and modern day Krakow. And they were kind of this neutral state that was administri administrated by Germans. Uh, Fr Hans Frank was the man who was the leader of this general government that was neutral. And this was in place part by the pact that was in, that was agreed upon between Germany and the Soviet Union. But the Soviet Union ended up attacking. They end up uh, Germany ended up declaring war on the Soviet Union, and we all know what happens from there. So here we have the map shows the area of the former ghetto in Krakow and it changes to its borders. So its borders change, its borders shrunk as the war progressed because unfortunately there were train tracks that led outside the ghetto to the death camps nearby. We may have used the word concentration before. There were concentration camps, but there were also camps that were not meant for concentrating anyone. You got there, you would die. It was very, very sad, very, very dark. And um, the ghetto shrunk and shrunk due to the people being sent to the death camps and the population dwindling to the point where it was only two small little ghettos, one for working Jews and the other one for non-working Jews. Non-working Jews were elderly um, children uh, under a certain age 
and uh, people who might be handicapped as well or other people who are not working for other reasons and here we have the ghetto fighters oh wow interesting so there was a resistance here oh, that's interesting Bree says that is fascinating, the truth of life and death, yeah. The kindness of the pharmacist brings hope for a more compassionate, empathetic world. That's right. What? That's right. Yeah. So Susie says, uh, ghetto has a different meaning. Yeah, ghetto was appropriated in American lingo uh, for mostly African-American neighborhoods that were kind of segregated from the rest of the main cities, uh, known as the inner city, or later, the ghetto. And in the US, to be ghetto is um, someone who's from the inner city, typically showing what would be low-income African-American uh, culture. Um, not, it's a terrible word. It's a terrible connotation. Um, we're all Americans in that context. But yeah, that term was appropriated in, Amer in America. <laughs> Chris says, is Poland real? There is a conspiracy theory for some reason. Along with Finland, that people think Poland is not real. Poland is indeed real. And I'm walking through it right now. And we can see there's life in the streets here. And there's a lot of vintage shops. Ooh, I gotta come here. I gotta come back to Krakow because it's such a cool vibe here. I love it. Susie says, I tend to use it haphazardly. Yeah, I mean, uh, if you grew up in certain areas in New York, it would be more casual to say ghetto. Look how gorgeous the bars here are. They're just amazing. I, I, I really love the vibes here in Krakow. It's just very beautiful bars, cafes. I've been stunned by the beauty of this city. Look, there's, oh my God. This, See, this is very important, coziness, coziness. And I think the Krakowians, I'm not sure how you would call someone from Krakow. And I'm gonna say Krakow mostly, uh, just because that's how we say it in English. And most of my audience is English speaking, not Polish. So I'm gonna say in the English way mostly. But yeah, yeah, cozy places are very important. And uh, we lost sight of that in the U.S., especially in New York City and many other major cities. We no longer build that many cozy places unless if they're prohibitively expensive uh, because you're there for a fancy dinner or, or an overly expensive jazz show. But I still like that there's nice casual bars and cafes that are that cozy. Susie says it's a little gritty. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit more gritty. We have a little bit more graffiti here than uh, other parts we've seen. At least this building seems to be partly abandoned. Carol says I was bought, uh, brought up by a Jewish family. It means a lot showing this place. Oh, I'm, I'm glad, uh, Carol, I can show you this. Hey, Lorraine, thank you so much for tuning in. The truth written on the walls of life, says Brie. That's right. That's right. Here, the art factory. So someone earlier, yesterday, was asking, is there, Jew is there Asian food? Yes, there is Asian food. You'll find a lot of Vietnamese. Uh... Let me know for any of the Polish urbanists tuning in. Why is there a lot of Vietnamese food? Look at the coffee shops. 
That's nice. Coffee shops are open till late night. Oh my god, that's amazing. Chris has no actual charm in cities. Yeah, I mean, it depends. Yeah, a lot of cities are kind of lost their charm uh, in the US. It's, uh, it's a bit sad. Wow. Mika says there were there are exactly the same pubs in, in Berlin at the area you were in. Okay, I got I got to give Berlin another visit. <laughs> I mean, I had good first impressions. Uh, I would go back to Berlin. Uh, so I'm glad to hear that there were other places in Berlin that I should check out. Do you see sm people smoking cigarettes? During, you know, not that much. Uh, I do see people here smoking a bit more than the US, but not as much as Paris or Italy or Greece. Uh, not as much people smoking. Wow. Eliza says, yes, very moving to see and share it with Jewish friends around the world. Here are some historical dates for the history of Jews in Krakow. Only 10% survived the Holocaust. Yeah, you know, I have such dates right now with me. And, uh, so I went to the museum and they gave us these cards. Let me show you the first one for, uh, I got three of them. That's my third one. Here's the first one third. Here's the first one I got. So the, Factory Museum of Oskar Schindler, the same one as the movie was based on. Uh, his actual factory was located here in Krakow. It's now a museum. Highly recommend checking it out. It is worth it. And they give you these cards with these actual stamps on them uh, that would be similar to those of, of the time. And each of these cards, I have three of them, says a specific date. First here says August 6, 1939. The last day of the 25th annual reunion of the soldiers of the Polish legions is celebrated in Krakow. Marshal Edward Rids takes part in the event. So this is very important. Um, this is a very important celebration for the Polish people. Uh, it marks Polish independence. Uh, it marks the Polish, uh, yeah, the free independent Polish state that was in place uh, for those 25 years prior to 1939 but then of course everything changed March 20th 1941 and here we see a Jewish stamp a part of the Krakow's district of Pordogores which I think is the neighborhood where I was at earlier at the factory just about 30 minute walk away has been converted into a Jewish residential quarter for the Jews living in the city, this being set as the deadline for their removal to a new area. And all Jews would have been forced, required, if they disobeyed by the penalty of death to wear the Star of David. I mean, just imagine, like I know a lot of people, of course I know people who tune in are Jewish, but there's a lot of people who are tuning in that are Christian or Catholics or Greek Orthodox. Imagine being forced to wear a cross. Of course we wear a cross. You know, it's the religion we grew up with or the religion we still um, attend to. But just imagine being forced to it. Or you're Islamic, being forced to wear the crescent moon. Yeah. And then the last card I end up getting is January 18th, 1945. Units of the Red Army enter Krakow. The German preoccupation, the German occupation of the city is over. And here we have, of course, the hammer and sickle of the Soviets. People here in Poland were confused because they, um, they thought the Soviets were their allies. The Soviets were part of the allies. Uh, the, well, along with the US, Canada, Australia, Britain, um, the French resistance, they were part of the allies. But the Soviets did not care for Poland. They did not care for 
peace in Poland. They did not care for Polish culture. They did not care for Polish sovereignty. They did not care for Poland and its people. When the Soviets took over on that day, oh, I dropped my cards. Ah, I'm gonna keep these. These are great keepsakes. Um, when the Soviets took over on that day that I just said, what was the day again? January 18th, 1945. Shortly thereafter, they asked um, in mass who. Sorry, who is part of the Jew Polish resistance? Poland, especially Warsaw, where we visited, formed the biggest resistance that was not part of a major army during World War II. It was a civilian led resistance. Uh, I forgot the number I said earlier. I think it was 200,000 people in Warsaw uh, and led to the utter destruction of Warsaw by the Germans. The Soviets did not want anything to do with these people either. So they took over the city. People might say they liberated. They did not liberate it. They uh, basically rolled over and were the new conquerors. So they asked, hey, uh, who's part of the resistance? Come forward. Uh, we'll, we'll make sure that the Germans won't get you. We sure, we'll make sure that you receive no retribution for your service in the resistance against German occupation. Many soldiers came forward thinking that the Soviets were being honest. They were boarded onto trains heading east, deep, deep into Siberia, left to work in the gulags in utter cold weather and potentially suffering way worse torture than one can imagine. The Soviets weren't honest. They didn't care for the Poles. They didn't care for the resistance fighters. They send them to their deaths. And you can imagine as a people here in Poland, if you, if you were Jewish, unfortunately, only 10% survive, but if you were anyone else, you'd be confused. You'd be like, what's happening here? Uh, we got invaded by the Germans. We thought the Soviets were on our back and then the Soviets um, end up being worse, but as bad as the Germans or in some respects worse. Uh, but let's not even compare um, atrocities. Uh, but nonetheless, it's, it's like what happened here? You know, and then and it kind of sucks because the U.S. of course uh, took control of half of Germany and half of Germany thrived, but that was not the case with Poland. Uh, the Soviets butt in way before America or any of the other allies could do anything. Ron says, makes you wonder why humanity continues to make the same cruelty today, you know. Yeah, it's, um, it is a bit of a com confounding fact of humanity. Interesting artwork here. Oh. Look at this. Someone left a quote here. It says, the heart it shall remember that which the mind it has forgot. The heart shall know of sorrow whence the mind it has forgot. The heart it shall deem reason whence the mind begins to pale. The heart shall stride on boldly through the valley and the vale. Wow. That's a beautiful poem. Let me know if that's a poem written, published by a famous poet or, or if this is the work of this graffiti artist. Oh, that's powerful. And he's right. Or he or she is right.
this is another powerful mural. Look at this. Here we have, we're showing the neighborhood we're located in, Kazmierza, part of my Polish, uh, the Jewish district. And the center, which I'm not entirely sure what that center building is. Is that the synagogue? Do let me know. Uh, or is that the market? Um, but it shows as a beating heart. May a beating heart of the Jewish people of Poland. And Jews in Poland was no minority. They were a big portion of the population in cities like Krakow. So, um, you know, it wasn't insignificant. Similar to Brooklyn today in New York City or New York City in general, um, or LA, Los Angeles in the US. There was a significant Jewish population. And look here we have Donald says it's beautiful how they lit up the map. Yeah, Nicole says that's beautiful. Dennis says it's a shame that Vandal drew on top of that poem. Yeah, that poem is gorgeous. It is a bit of a shame that it was drawn upon. There's a bar called Bill Hickman. And they have the menus drawn as if it were graffiti tags. I like this. Jess Do. Dobrezy, 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 Dobrezy. Nicole says it's a full moon today. Indeed, it is a full moon today. I, you know, I'm going to return to the block, but I want to see a little bit more of this block over here. Hello, Lorraine. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate you. Uh, Ludo says, no poem known by Google. Okay, so that appears to be an original poem. That's beautiful. If anyone could write it down in the comments, I would appreciate that. I think every... Uh, go back to that point. Some shaking, so, shaky cell phone reception. Oh, traditional Polish cuisine. Lorraine says, I love the videos you share. My pleasure, Lorena. I'm glad you enjoy my videos. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Hey, Firestorm says, what happened? Uh, there seems to have been some cell phone interruption. Not sure what happened. Check out this building over here. Ooh, it's cold. Oh, it's getting it's getting really cold over here. I'm gonna put on my hat. Let me know if you still see me and hear me, ladies and gentlemen. Can you hear me? people are hearing me that's good all right what building is this let's see wow the da says good 10-4 10-4 four. <laughs> ten four indeed You know, um, I have to say this. Uh, Americans get a lot of shit nowadays. Um, we, we get cues of imperialism and, and uh, conquering and, and trying to, you know, destroy other groups of people. But you, you gotta put yourself in the position right now of an American soldier going halfway across the world, across the Atlantic or across the Pacific to fight a war that is not even on their own soil. To try to take down a regime, which would be the Germans and the Japanese on the other side, so they can stop 
doing these heinous acts of the Holocaust in China was the the rape of Manchuria uh, to stop doing these heinous acts uh, it's something to I think deeply appreciate uh, uh, from point of view as an American I don't expect anyone else to appreciate around the world but as an American I think it's very important uh, to appreciate the valiant effort done by these American soldiers and women as well who were on the battlefield um, helping the war effort um, I think we did the right thing in World War II. We, 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 we easily could have stayed home because the Germans weren't going to come across the Atlantic. They were trying to, but they, they were going to take a, quite a while to get through. The Japanese, they tried to. They were going to take a while to get over to U.S. soil. No one else was going to attack us. Mexico was not going to attack us. We were allied with Canada. No one was going to attack us. And yet, American soldiers went and fought, and rather valiantly. That's something to appreciate, I think. Something to honor. Seems to be a restaurant during the day. Oh no, this is a bookstore, look at that, wow. He's a little tiny bar. Hmm. Hey, Vino says, yeah, this used to be a synagogue. Oh, I, I had the feeling this used to be a synagogue. Thank you so much, Vino, for letting us know. The large building you just showed used to be a synagogue. Is it this one or is it this one? Or is it that? No, it can't be this one. This one seems to be another building. Is it this one? Do let me know. It's nice yet educational to have folks like you, Ariel, Action Kid and Rob, says Reggie, to bring us the sights and sounds. Sunshine's left a $5 super chat. Thank you so much, Sunshine. I appreciate the contribution. Um... Susie says, you're lucky, you've been so lucky with good reception. Yeah, actually, in general, I have. Uh, these countries I visited have had excellent cell phone reception. Vino says, uh, the old headquarters of the Germans was on the right. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see. Hmm. Oh, I smell fresh tobacco. Oh, it smells good. I think th I think that was not that that might have been at some point a religious building, but this one surely was religious. Look at that! Wow. It's a miracle. I'm not sure if they put this after the fact, but the Germans did not want any Hebrew. Or any Yiddish or any language related to Judaism to be in use. Polish was starting to be erased as well. So um, if this is original, this is quite a miracle that it survived. Because the Germans were going street by street trying to take it down. And I have a photo of it actually. Let's see if I can find it. And there seems to be a marker, so we'll wait until that couple. Um, moves but uh let me see if i can find a photo of the germans taking down signs and they did this rather meticulously
Unfortunately, I can't find the photo, but this would have been... Hey, Maureen. Maureen left a $50 super chat. Hey, Maureen, thank you so much. Wow, that means a lot. A round of hearts to Maureen for leaving me a $50 super chat. Thank you so much, Maureen. I'm, I'm glad you're enjoying it. So this would have been a scene that we would have seen in Krakow as um, the Jewish people were forced into the ghetto and then they were forced to work and then forced to build the wall, the ghetto wall. And then they were sent off just a couple dozen miles away and that was all that was left let's see if the sign is in English It says the inscription indicate that this building was once the house of study for Torah, specifically, uh, conducted Talmud lessons for adult members of the Jewish community. The inscription within the Shields of David indicates, according to the Jewish calendar, that the group was founded in 1810 and that the building was renovated in 1912. In 1773, the building was damaged by fire. Wow, this is an old building. Wow, very old, uh, seven, uh, prior to 1770s, uh, was damaged by fire and only renovated in the first half of the 19th century, 1800s. During the renovation, it was converted into the group's learning center for the Talmic studies, which previously operated on 6, 6 Estner Street, which might have been nearby, in the Jewish Quarter. The building was renovated again in 1912, and the acronym right in the front stands for Holy Society a common name for a voluntary organization engaged in activities relating to the observing of Jewish commandments within the Jewish community. Here we can see a photo of the building, the inscriptions. Wow. Powerful reminder of the community that used to be here. Marco says, hey, hello, we're still grateful that Americans helped us in the Second World War, but they did not come to save us. Yeah, yeah, they did not. I, I'm sure um, Americans that were in leadership positions at the time might have had regret, regrets relating to that. You know, it was a very tricky position for the Americans. If we would have, and Americans were tempted to go to war with the Soviets, because we knew it was a, they were a threat. We knew that they were not someone to take lightly. Um, but it, it, we had to do with something, what is called triage. We had to make a decision between two bad decisions. Uh, let the Soviet Union continue and continue its harsh regimes upon the world. Or... Uh, sacrifice many millions of more American men or risk a complete destruction of world order if we were started putting nuclear bombs all around the Soviet Union it was a tough 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 decision uh, I hope, can't say if it's the right one but it was the tough one Here we have more Star of Davids. Susie says, I, want, I started to read Martin Greenfield's book. He was a menswear manufacturer in Bushwick, and he was a Holocaust survivor. 
Also, Poland was split by the Germans and the Soviet Union. Yes, it was, Adam. And here we have some street art commemorating the Jewish population here. Mighty Bull, leave me a $5 super chat, uh, some coffee money. Uh, thank you so much, Mighty Bull. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for the $5 super chat. I will use it for a good coffee tomorrow. Adam says now uh, Jews have been trying to find a safe place to live. You know, I'm, I'm glad in, in America, especially cities, specifically New York and Los Angeles, has been quite a... I might use this word, I'm not sure if it's accurate, but I'm going to use the word anyway. It's been quite a haven for the Jewish population. Um, we've seen the Jews of America thrive, uh, really influence culture and industry in massive ways. You know, it has been such a, a true American dream. When you look at the Jewish story in America, it's, it is a true American dream. Uh, people coming from some of the poorest areas of Europe, uh, not all of them, of course, some Jewish people who immigrated had some, had some means, um, but some didn't. Uh, coming from areas of Europe where they were persecuted. Of course, not all of them, but some definitely were. And yet they moved up despite all uh, odds in some cases. And they've gone to start massive Hollywood companies. They've gone to start some of the biggest clothing companies in the world. People like Ralph Lauren and Calvin Klein and Donna Karen, uh, many others. The list goes on. Names that are not even known, but they definitely produce some of the uh, most amount of clothes in America to... Uh, as I mentioned, movie studios, MGM, Fox, and also uh, many other aspects, sciences, um, to the innovations of nuclear energy. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a massive list. It's a, a, a great accomplishment of the Jewish community in America. At least that's the way I see it, so. Hey, good morning, says uh, Marjan. Thank you so much for tuning in, Marjan. Meadow says, this is depressing on a Saturday night. Yeah, uh, well, you know. Um, <laughs> well, I, I'm only here one more night, so um, I think a lot of people would uh, want to see this uh, area. Green says, is, uh, was our, our President Trump a Jew? No. He is Protestant. Yeah, he's Protestant. I'm not sure what denomination, but no. And President Biden is Catholic. He's Catholic. President Biden should be the second Catholic president, I think. Was he? Was John, F. Was John F. Kennedy Catholic? I forgot. We haven't had a Jewish president yet. We had a, a few Jewish presidential nominees, but not a Jewish president yet. In America, at least. So we see the outline of the ghettos over here. Well, not all of them, actually. No, here we're, we're actually, never mind. We're not seeing the outline. This is not related to, um, to history. This is more uh, different walks around the city. But if you're looking forward to see a little bit more nightlife of uh, Krakow, stay tuned. We're, we're going to walk to areas that are a little bit more vibrant in just like five to ten minutes. Tama says the ghetto was on the south side. Yes, it was on the south side of the river. So we're about 30 minutes away from that area. This was the Jewish district. 
not the ghetto. Tammuz says Antwerp has the largest, third largest Jewish community outside of Israel. Oh, interesting, yeah. I think, uh, I think New York should be number one. Hey, oh, look at that, shisha bar. That's cool. I want to smoke some shisha. Dr. Tachi, thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate everyone tuning in. Let me know where you're watching from. We're right now strolling through the Jewish Quarter, and let's uh, find the... Wow, this, this is such a beautiful city. I mean, I'm loving walking here at night. I'm just stunned by its utter beauty. Wow. Oh, here we have a menorah. I'm so glad. There's a lot more Jewish symbols and signage here. This is, this is awesome. Oh, look. Look what this restaurant is named. Ladies and gentlemen, I found my restaurant. Wow. There's an Urbanist Cafe in Romania, and now there's an Ariel restaurant <laughs> in Krakow. That's cool. So there you go. My restaurant, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see how they write my name in what appears to be Hebrew lettering, but it's not actually Hebrew. Right up there. <laughs> so despite my name no uh i am not uh jewish by ancestry um ariel is also a common name among puerto ricans well somewhat common uh, among puerto ricans dominicans colombians mostly uh, i grew up catholic but yes ariel is a popular name originally a popular name in among Jewish people and Israel, Israelis. Here are different bands, it seems. Look at this. Different bands. Oh my god, I gotta go to my restaurant. It seems quiet. They have lamb. Well, that's good. Roast of lamb. 72 Zolti. 72 divided by 4. Not that expensive. It's not that expensive at all. Wow, that's cool. I would love a roast of lamb. Cool dishes. Wow, nice. Ooh, they got pierogi with cheese, potatoes, and onions. With meat. And they got one with spinach. Oh my god. When Ariel first started doing these videos, I thought he was Jewish, but then I found out he's a brother. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed, I'm Puerto Rican, and I was raised Catholic. Uh, I don't have, as far as I know, any Jewish ancestry at all. Um, look at that. But look, wow. <laughs> That's amazing. Beautiful restaurant. Wow, Ariel's doing a great job. That's amazing. Look at that. Uh, please read the posted info, says Eliza. Here's the, what the name Ariel means, says Eliza. It means Lion of God. Yes, it does mean the Lion of God. Yes. Uh, Gary says, I'm amazed that Ariel has been on for a while and still hasn't had a donut yet. <laughs> This tummy might be rumbling. I'm saving space because I'm going to eat with uh, uh, my friend Evan uh, soon and a few other people. Uh, when Ariel started doing these live videos, I thought he was Jewish. So I found out was, he was a brother, says DS. <laughs> Sometimes a very big beard might, might, uh, <laughs> might give off a different impression. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If, uh, if uh, this hat was any smaller, I would uh, definitely, yeah, you, I would definitely look like a rabbi. Especially when I grow up my hair. Um, 
you know, I, I as far as I know, I don't have any Jewish ancestry, but uh, Spaniard and Portuguese ancestry share some genes with uh, the stereotypical you know, Jewish image you might think about because there was uh, big, big groups from those areas, the Sephardic Jews, that moved to different parts of Europe and later to America as well. They were the first ones to really to move to America, first Jewish people to move to America. Um, Wendy says, looks like a good time here. And uh, it says Ariel is a place. Ariel is a, yes, it's a settlement uh, in Israel. Yes, it's a new neighborhood or city uh, or new town. Um, I say new because it was built like 20 something years ago. Uh, but Ariel also is kind of the stand-in name for Israel as well. Uh, maybe it's the name of the owner. Maybe, maybe. It's kind of cool. Um, hey, wow, I'm, I'm tempted to go in. Huh? Maybe I'll come in next time. Look, double bass. Look at over there. Oh, they have live music on the second floor. L.A.B. says it, Rabbi Ariel. <laughs> says Rabbi, uh, Rabbi Vera. <laughs> wow. So there we go, Ariel. I gotta take a... Hmm. Wait, I gotta do it with the... Take a screenshot now, so I can remember this memory of coming across Ariel the restaurant. I don't see this name often in places, which are, I haven't been to Israel, but in other places I haven't seen this name. That looks fun go in. Yeah, it, it's a bit, it's a bit full. Though I'm tempted to come back and do another live stream inside, once I'm already inside, settled in. Hey, Daryl says, thank you for the condolences of my mom passing away. Yeah. Hey, everyone. Um, Well, uh, Daryl, unfortunately, has lost someone very close to him. And uh, I want to offer my condolences. Hope you're feeling uh, hanging in there, Daryl. Everyone send a round of hearts to Daryl, uh, who tunes in. Uh, who's been tuning in for many years on Urbanist? Ooh, I hear live jazz. Wow. Bree says, uh, very good name that you have. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate that. It is a good name. Ooh, there's a sky bar here. This is a nice neighborhood. I like this. I'm in love with this neighborhood. There's an old water pump. Hey, Oleg says, Ariel, you might have a discount there. <laughs> I may have a discount. Here we see more signage. Wow, more signage in Hebrew. I wonder what this was. Let's take a closer look. This was a synagogue, the Remu Synagogue, built in 1558. So think about that, ladies and gentlemen. And Jewish people appear, he, probably here way longer than that. But 1558 is already a long time. That's 500 years. Repeatedly transformed, including thoroughly by um, an architect in 1929. And 1958 to 1968 was renovated following the damage of the Second World War. Uh, the Torah Ark and Stone Money Box for the second half of the 16th century. 16th century over right here <laughs> so I had a feeling those groups of Google guys were uh, gonna start uh, saying youtuber youtuber uh, they were about to start and then a few of their other friends shushed them <laughs> because I think they know uh, why I'm in front of this place
Bree says, you managed to get very good light. Yeah, I mean, the streets are very well lit. And I'm very purposeful, too. You usually stand by good lighting. Uh, so I'm doing my best also with lighting, but yeah. Can I see that Hebrew writing? Yeah, yeah. Here. And I'll show you the... Lorraine says it looks safe over here. Really safe, yeah. Wow, so synagogue dating back to 1558. 500 years. Wow. So it, it does open. And it seems like it's still a place of worship. So pro tip, if you ever see a sign on one of my live videos, you can always go back on the live video. Live videos live on basically forever uh, in most instances. Uh, and, or you can also screenshot while you're watching live. Learn how to screenshot on your computer or your phone, but it's a very easy process. You just press a few buttons and you screenshot and you can um, read it more patiently later. Owen says that it means a lot how you present Jewish topics with such tenderness. Oh, Owen, thank you so much for saying that. You know, I, I grew up, to me, Jewish culture was it's just normal. Um, I grew up around it. You know, uh, being a New Yorker, it's it's everywhere. Being an American, it's everywhere. You know, uh, like, my favorite shows convey that typical Jewish comedy. You know, it's a... Um, which uh, hails back to Yiddish theaters in the Lower East Side in the early 1900s. So, to me, this it feels like my culture. Well, not maybe the Polish version, but at least uh, a part of it feels like it's my culture as well. Um, growing up with Jewish uh, culture all around me, at least the American version. So, I feel a connection with it. Of course, it I don't have blood relation to it, um, and I'm not did not grow up in that culture, but I grew up around it for sure. signs I'm glad that there's a lot of Jewish food here that's great news similar to the Jewish area of Rome <laughs> like Bree, Bree says Seifeld yeah Seifeld Seifeld is without a doubt the legacy of Jewish comedy in the United States. There's a specific, a specific way of being funny that is specific to the the Jewish people who started in the Yiddish theaters of the Lower East Side. Um, that humor is very specific. It's very specific. The more you see it, the more you you get attuned to it. It has kind of been integrated into what would be typical American humor. Somewhat. You know, America is a huge country. But um, definitely it is a very specific type of humor. And Seifeld is very indicative of that. Uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm. Uh, there's a lot of other great examples. Let me know other great examples. Uh, Mel Brooks movies. And it's not just because the people, the writers, and the actors, the performers are Jewish. But specifically, the comedy itself. Woody Allen also. This comedy itself is is Jewish. And I mean that with the utmost of respect. I think it's, it's one of the coolest parts of American culture. Mm -hmm. 
wonder if the signs are originally old. Those signs do not appear to be authentically old, uh, but they're definitely recreations. Is this the old Jewish quarter in Krakow? Says uh, Arjuna. Yes, it is. We are in Krakow, Poland right now, and this is the old Jewish quarter. So yes. Bagel says, I feel so lost without my parents and grandparents. Oh, my condolences, Bagel. I'm so sorry to hear that uh, you're no longer, they're no longer with us. Um, food, uh, uh, Dia says, uh, Steven Spielberg. Well, Steven Spielberg doesn't really implement much humor into his movies, but <laughs> he's definitely a very famous uh, Jewish American, that's for sure. Uh, hey, Bagel uh, says, this is a wonderful live stream. I'm glad I you're you're enjoying this live stream. Thank you so much for tuning in. Arjuna says, I love Krakow. Yeah, Krakow is awesome. I, I love it too. I've been here only two days and it's just amazing. Eliza says, beautiful commentary, Ariel, about American Jewish community history as well. Yeah, I mean, that's what I know. So I wish I knew more about Jewish, uh, Polish Jewish culture. I don't know too much, but I'm glad I can share at least some perspective of what I know about Jewish culture in my home country of America. What is this? Regional alcohol. That's crazy. <laughs> Look at all of it. Look at all the beer bottles. Oh my. Look at that. Wow, that's crazy. You can buy any beer you want in the world. Right here. Adam says, also Adam Sandler. Adam Sandler, yeah. It's a tricky one, but yeah. That one I, I would need a little bit of the help from people who are a bit more uh, well-versed in comedy. What do you think of Adam Sandler? Does he, does, he ex does he do a typical Jewish style of humor? You know, Adam Sandler, not, not so much. He's a bit of a different kind of character. He has a more of a <laughs> potty humor, at least in his earlier movies. Which is uh, great. It's very funny, but it's, it's yeah, it's different from the other people I just mentioned. This is the most organized spirit shops I've ever seen. Says Dutch Tachi, yeah, yeah, it is. Here's some beautiful street art. Let's check this out. Wow, this is a beautiful neighborhood. I highly recommend visiting this neighborhood. It's right by the old town. What's the outside temp? It's getting cold. It's like 46 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, Susie says, oh yeah, he has done uh, very Jewish things. He's done uh, the Hanukkah song. That's amazing. Oh, beautiful. The stream in Waterloo was mind blowing, says. Uh, DS, you have been to a lot of historical spots. What was it like to be in Waterloo knowing that history? It was wonderful. Um, wow, Absinthe Bar. Oh my. Look at that. Ooh, look how cozy these bars are. Oh my. Oh, ah, New York. <laughs> That's a step up its game. They have uh, they have karaoke. Uh -huh. Oh my God, these bars are so gorgeous. You know, uh, Krakow uh, has great taste in in bars. They're very they're kind of they they capture the coziness of the British pub, but with low tables, which I prefer personally. Uh, which I like, and they don't seem as loud as uh, some Irish pub, uh, some Irish or British pubs can get. So I kind of I'm digging the vibes of these Krakow pubs. Hey, Arjuna says a revival of Polish Jewish culture has begun through the work of Michael Shudrich. Uh, chief Rabbi of Poland, who's American with Polish accessory. Ah, interesting. 
Hey, Bagel says, this is just priceless. Oleg says, don't try Zubrovka, which is vodka with herbs. Bad for your sensitive skin. <laughs> Zubrovka. <laughs> That's interesting. Thank you so much for the heads up. Uh, I think so much is lost with modern urbanism. History cannot be re replaced with the urbanization of neighborhoods. Says Bagel with the schmear. Um, yeah, yeah, it is a bit uh, uh, sad when um, cities urbanize or modernize too fast. I think modernization could be done well, but sometimes we get a bit too hasty and we start losing the old character of what made neighborhoods great. And I'm glad that old character has been maintained here. So we got more Jewish writing right here. Hebrew. Hey, Rafael, thank you so much for um, using the commands I use on Nightbot. Appreciate that. Ooh, bar, coffee, and fun. Retro. Oh, look at that. All right, bear with me, ladies and gentlemen. All right, I'm back. Sorry for the interruption. I love that you have more of these brightly lit bars as well, which is, is so unique in America. Uh, like compared to America, we we don't always have this brightly lit bars unless if it's like a sports bar. This is kind of nice. Is Hebrew read backwards as DA? I think it is. I don't know too much about Hebrew off the top of my head. So if anyone can let us know, do write it in the comments. Continental Europe is so good at maintaining its character. It is. It is. I mean, that's why I love Europe in general. Uh, I think uh, the the urban planning of medieval cities, the the aesthetic of of neoclassical architecture from the 1700s to the early 1900s. All, I think, has so many positive qualities to it that, in my opinion, is 100% um, something that should be preserved. And I think we should uh, build new things, drawing inspiration from those two aspects of European, of the European built environment. So I think we should draw inspiration from the tinier streets of medieval cities like Krakow, uh, I've been to many others, Maastricht, um, many in England, which uh, I'm forgetting the names of right now, but many in England, Chester was one of them. Uh, so I think we can learn a lot. And then we can learn a lot by this type of beautiful architecture that we see here, neoclassical. All this architecture would have been more like seven, 1800s, 1900s. And here's like the main street food square, which I think during the daytime is a market, hence these canopies. Might be a historic market as well. Ray says, have you ever been to Spain? Never saw one of your videos, Super Nick. I went, I went for one week to Madrid back in uh, 2018, February 2018. Um, yeah, yeah, I went back then. Uh, th however, those videos disappeared because they were mostly on Facebook. And Facebook erased most of my older live videos prior to 2020, which is so sad. Uh, so I lost many of those live videos. Some of them may have been posted on urbanist urbanist bonus youtube channel or you can go to 
go to my Urbanist Facebook page, and I think a few, maybe two or three Madrid videos did survive. Will I go to Spain again? Yeah, I would love. I I, I got I got put more, more more of my Spanish to use, so <laughs> I would love to go to Spain again. So this is apparently a very famous street food place with these very long sandwiches. Uh, the line was crazy long before, right before I started the live stream. Luckily, it's gone a little bit down. So, wow. Let me know what's the fuss about with this uh, type of sandwich. It seems like this is the popular one, but there's another one here with less people waiting. DA says, what time is it here? It's about 8 p.m. right now. Let me know, should I go to Spain? Would you like to see me in Spain? Let me know in the comments. I've covered a lot of Europe, but Spain has barely been covered. My impression of Madrid was very bad. Um, you know, I did not like Madrid much, but I heard other parts of Spain might be worth it. Dennis says, why did they do that? I, I don't know fully why. I think uh, Facebook just wanted to erase older live videos in general. That, that was the policy that they did. It was just a general policy. I was just a victim to it out of probably countless live videos that were deleted. And there we are. Do you accept card? Yeah. Yeah, I'll have uh, the uh, this one, number five. And the water. Yeah. 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 Oh, with sauce, I'll have uh, <laughs> mayonnaise. Okay, so I'll have at least a bite of uh, of this <laughs> because so many people are lining up for it. Uh, I think I got way here, but so many people are lining up for it, so might as well. I don't got a number, so I gotta like, guess what I have. How do you say number five in Polish? Let me know.
Philippe says, will you try Romania? I have been to Romania. I went in also in 2018 as well. And that was also on Facebook mostly. And some of those videos did survive, but most of them were deleted, unfortunately. So yeah, I've also covered Romania. Adam says, what did you get? Again, number five, which was uh, cranberry, um, goat cheese, bacon, and a few other things. All right. Let's, uh, let's wait for this. And then uh, I can enjoy a nice bite before I have a dinner. So, an appetizer. And I spent 28 zolti. 28 is less than it's it's like seven dollars around there it's not that much seven dollars yeah it's seven dollars so seven dollars uh for a, what appears to be like a huge like pizza sandwich type of deal and some water as well so stay tuned reggie says is there mcdonald's or kfc there is kfc and there's mcdonald's yeah there's there's american fast food here there's domino's as well but Polish food is so good, uh, and it's not so expensive, and they do enjoy their cheesy things and meaty things, so I would recommend trying Polish food if you're here. Uh, it is 100% worth it. But yes, there is the classic fast food. All right. Hey, Maurice, thank you so much for tuning in. Nicole says, uh, too bad. Well, I'd love to see the, uh, the Romanian videos. Romania was an interesting place as well. Uh, I personally enjoyed it, but I was invited by the tourism board. I don't think the tourism board had a high... Um, I don't think the tourism board had a high opinion of their own city. Uh, <laughs> I kept asking, hey, what do you enjoy about the city? And the tourism board was like, eh, it's not that much. You know, go, go to this... This is like random library, like a little like bookstore cafe. This was nice, but like they were so unenthused about their own history, unenthused about uh, the historical sites. It was a bit of a bummer. It was a very odd, odd situation in, in Romania, but I would like to go back at some point. So stay tuned. Mika says, are we fine dining somewhere? No, we probably won't be fine dining, no. I w I'm tempted, but no, we're not fine dining. I don't think, uh, I don't think my uh, group <laughs> is into fine dining too much, so. Hey, AJ says, how do Polish people cope when they're being talked to? They just talk normally. Um, uh, some people know English, some people don't. Um, it's easy to get by because all you do is point at the menu. So you don't really need to do too much. It's, it's pretty, pretty easy. I, I haven't had too much difficulty trying to get a message across. Other countries are a bit more tougher. I think people could hear English pretty well. Uh, may not speak it so well, but they can definitely hear it. So, if I speak, when I've spoken English, uh, it seems like they know what I'm trying to say. Have you had Polish kibasa yet? Uh, Daryl, I had the, the stuffed cabbage. I'm not sure if that's kibasa, but I did have stuffed cabbage earlier today, and it was delicious. I'll be posting uh, Instagram stories on it, so stay tuned.
Ladies and gentlemen, look at this. Wow. <laughs> this is gigantic. Uh, this is goat cheese, bacon, cranberry sauce, uh, pickles, and mayonnaise, <laughs> all in one. <laughs> in it, what appears to be like similar to a bide, which is kind of uh, uh, a pizza that you see in like in the Middle East. Greece also sells these. I'm not sure what they, they call them here. Is a traditional, so it's similar to that. So Poland has its own version over it. So let's try it out. All right, let's see how it is. Wish me luck. to it which is good with everything that's a lot on it the bacon is more like ham I would prefer the American bacon that would have been so nice to have that kind of crispy bacon um, flavor with the cheese but it's really good I like the pickles I like the cranberry sauce I love that Polish people have so much cranberry sauce did we Americans get this from Polish people well, let me know I, I'm so curious about how do why do Polish people have cranberry sauce and why do us Americans have it as well? That's great. Wow. Mm. Purple Sunny in says, Mr. Ariel. Hey, thank you so much. He says, I'm a star. Thank you. Looks so filling for one person. Oh, it is. Is it French bread? Yeah, it's similar to French bread. I'm not sure if Polish have um, their own name for it, but yeah, similar to French bread. The French bread that we would sell in the US. So not French bread from France, not baguette, but similar to French bread, which will, what we would call in the US. Yeah. And yeah, the portions in Poland are gigantic. The Polish love their huge portions. And it's not like in Greece where it's supposed to be mostly communal. Here people are just legit eating their gigantic portions. You see people of all sizes here, of all genders eating this. It's crazy. Mm. 
uh, Susie says it looks like uh, the French bread pizza that you would get in the frozen food section. Yeah. <laughs> it has a similar look to it. Maybe it's inspired by this, who knows. Of course it's fresh, but yeah, it has a similar look. Wow, all right. Yeah, I enjoy it. That's great. I'm gonna have one more bite, actually. Before I, I walk around and attempt to eat this at the same time, I have one more good bite. I almost says it's enough to share. Yeah, it is enough to share for sure. I think I ran out of cell phone reception. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let me know if you still see me and hear me. I think I might have uh, gotten the live video back. Facebook might have dropped, unfortunately, but let me know. Hey, it's a, it's a big shame that, that the service was giving me issues. I think uh, the issue was that I, um, I'm able to buy I was able to buy eSIM for Poland for 20 gigabytes and it wasn't quite enough uh, and already in two days, three, three days, I already ran out of cell phone reception, uh, which sucks. So more. Wow, I've been in Poland. This would be the fourth night I'm staying in Poland. Five days. Oh, I've been in Poland quite a, a while actually. So I ran out of cell phone uh, service for one of my SIM cards and I needed to switch to a different SIM card. And luckily the reception stuck through. It seems like Facebook dropped, but it seems like uh, at least YouTube and Twitch stuck along. So that was an amazing meal. Um, I'm going to walk back to the old town. Let me know if you want to see a little bit of going back to the old town. Uh, we do, it was spooky, says uh, Wendy. Yeah, that's what happens when you're using SIM cards from other countries. I, I quite didn't, didn't have the time to go to like a store to buy a physical SIM card. And physical SIM cards are disappearing because I'm very tempted to update to the iPhone 15 Pro. I currently use the iPhone 13 and the reason I use it is to uh, have the ability to use a SIM card, but the iPhone 15 does not have a, a SIM card slot. SIM card is the little card that's needed to get cell phone reception, or at least that used to be the case. And yeah, um, the downside is there's SIM cards are not don't have unlimited data. They still have only like 20 gigabytes or so uh, is usually the maximum. All right, so let's uh, make our way back to the old town. Any uh, viewers, let me know if Facebook is still on. I'm very curious if, if Facebook's still transmitting or did it crash on Facebook? The moon is gone. And here we have the main thoroughfares with the trams and everything. How, how was your late dinner last night? It was awesome. I enjoyed it, uh, Janice. Uh, I gobbled up that entire duck <laughs> or half a duck it was great i loved it shaky david says i'm still tasting that sandwich oh yes that sandwich is amazing trolley looks nice says dr tachi it really is yeah yeah i like him i haven't had a chance to take him but it looks like a great way to get around sure Naboon says facebook did crash oh no okay Bit more bustle, yeah, a bit more bustle here. It's 
So yeah, a bit more bustle here. I like this, these many main avenues. And right over here, oh, lots of shops, some hotels around us. A few offices. The city is clean. Yeah, the city is super clean. Wow, beautiful hotel lobbies. Look at that. Amazing. Champion says, would you live in Europe? Yeah, we 100% live in Europe. Um, I think the places I would live in Europe is Athens. I would live in Rome. I would consider living in Edinburgh, Scotland. Probably the top three right now. London has been demoted a little bit. I've gotten the taste for these other cities. <laughs> Firestorm says London, you know, London is no longer in the top three. Athens took my heart. Edinburgh as well. Um, Krakow looks compelling. Krakow is compelling, yeah. It's super compelling. I am loving it here. Murphy says there's no place like Rome. There isn't. Truly. All right. So I have arrived. There you see my Airbnb right there. No, not this building. That one. That one right there. The castle. There's my Airbnb. Evan is waiting uh, to go out for a night of eating, drinking, partying, clubbing, jazz clubbing, going into the doldrums of Krakow. <laughs> so right here is the castle. Grecia te siente bien, dice uh, Adriana, says uh, Greece is, fits you. Sí, eso sí es verdad. Uh, yo me sentí muy bien en Grecia. Yes, I did feel very good in Greece. <laughs> Dr. Tashi says, of course you're staying in the castle. I would not expect anything less. Luke says, maybe have a nice house in Dean Village. You know, Dean Village is gorgeous, uh, but it's a bit too quiet for me. So I, I wouldn't live in Dean Village, but it is gorgeous. I would probably live in... Um, probably the New Town, because I just love those big buildings. The houses or Stockbridge. Stockbridge is gorgeous. <laughs> All right. So we have arrived to the old town. You see how fast it was. I lost service, but I wasn't really walking too much when uh, service was lost. It was probably a, a minute walk. So as you can see, we got here very quickly from the Jewish district, the old Jewish district, to here to the old town. And the old town Market Square now is only about five minutes walk away. So here we are. It's a very easy walking distance in the main areas of Krakow that you want to visit. So I highly recommend going to this Jewish district. Uh, and as I mentioned, the Oscar Schindler Museum is worth it. I'll post a short video on it soon. And I did visit the salt mines. So a lot of people were asking me about the salt mines. And uh, if I were going to show it, there was no cell phone reception, of course, in the salt mines. I was not surprised by that. But I did film the entire tour. And usually, I would reserve the full tour for patrons. So go to patreon.com slash urbanist and you'll see other full tours that I've posted in the past. Um, and I would post a short video on all my platforms. But in this case, so many people want to see the salt mines. Uh, let me know, should I post a full nearly two hour video it's in vertical format because I st I'm still making short videos out of it. But should I post a full two-hour video publicly so everyone could tune in? <laughs> Let me know. Uh, I would be very curious uh, if people want to see that on YouTube and on Facebook. And here we have the horses. So everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. You're going to see more places all the way through March 3rd. I'm live basically every single day. 
and uh you'll see more evan soon in a few a few more live streams as well thank you everyone so much for tuning in stay tuned for the athens urbanist my first ever documentary series to be released march 7th at 7 p.m and premiering on a weekly basis from there everyone thank you so much for tuning in keep being awesome and always keep on exploring have a great day everyone bye bye and live long and prosper have a great day everyone Bye bye time to go to sleep. Oh, time to tidy up in my Airbnb. Have a good day, everyone.